Pushing to defund the police as crime spikes from coast to coast, but now even the White House admitting that cutting funding from police departments has had severe consequences. Listen to this. Gun violence is a huge reason for the surge in crime. Uh, underfunding of pol some police departments and their need for additional resources, something the president has advocated for consistently through the course of his career. That's something we know we need to take action on. Let's bring in Joe Gamaldi. He serves at the national vice, as the national vice president for the Fraternal Order of Police. Joe, it's good to see you. I got to say, your wardrobe's a little muted today <laughs> compared to other days that you have joined us. <laughs> but speak to this issue first of all. President Biden in, insisted after he became president that he was never for defunding the police. Uh, some people might say during the campaign he certainly walked a bit of a different line. But now the White House is saying at least part of the reason for the soaring crime that we're seeing across the nation is the underfunding of police. And I'm thinking to myself, what took them so long to acknowledge that? Well, it's certainly interesting that now all of a sudden we want to pay attention to the violent crime that is ravaging our communities. Because when the Biden-Harris uh, campaign was on the campaign trail, they said that they actually wanted to divert funding away from police departments into, into other programs. So what changed? You know, I guess when you have an approval rating in the 30 percent range, when you have 15 American cities having their highest ever recorded murder rate, and you're actually seeing police officers shot at historic amounts, 346 last year. I guess it was time to change your tune and actually pay attention to what's going on in this country. So here's an idea. Let's start getting grant funding for local police departments so we can deal with our horrific retention and retirement problem. Let's boisterously support the Protect and Serve Act that makes it a federal crime to assault police officers. And imagine this, the leader of our country boisterously supporting law enforcement and stop demonizing us. How far would that go? Or rebuking rogue prosecutors who are letting people out who are committing gun crimes over and over again. You want to talk about gun laws? Let's stop giving them a bond every time they shoot someone. That's how we enact real change in this country, and President Biden needs to be leading from the front. Bill Bratton, who is both the commissioner of police in New York and, and Los Angeles, was on America's Newsroom this morning. He was indicating that it's not just about funding for, for police, but actually applying the law. And, and putting people who violate the law in jail. Listen to what he said. The key to all of this is going after very aggressively those who are using those guns to commit the violence. And right now, the criminal justice system in New York City, in New York State, is not structured to do that. District attorneys, state legislature, on up to the governor, have not been supportive of getting tough on gun crime. Uh, there's a clarion call now from this mayor. Let's see who gets on board with him. Uh, Eric is the right man at the right time. And I'm not sure about the rest of the political establishment in New York State. So Bill Bratton supporting Eric Adams, the new mayor of New York City. I guess the jury is out, though, on whether the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, is going to live up to the challenge. Well, you know, it's funny, John. We know what reduces crime because the American police officer delivered historic crime reductions the prior 20 years to this huge spike we saw. We have to embrace the rule of law. We need to vehemently prosecute violent crimes, and we need to embrace broken windows. And to Commissioner Bratton's point, when they were stopping people for turnstile jumping in the in the subways, they were catching someone with an illegal firearm one every 20 times. But, you know, at this point, even if we had every police officer in Manhattan make those types of arrests, who knows what this DA is yeah. going to do? He already put out a memo that says, oh, don't worry if you rob someone. If you didn't mean to hurt him with that gun or knife, <laughs> we're going to make sure we downgrade that charge. And I mean, how could anyone in their right mind advocate this when we see shootings up 102 percent in New York? We just had a police officer murdered the other day, and this guy's out here saying he's got to be light on crime. It's a complete joke. Yeah, back, back to your idea on the fair jumping and people being uh, arrested for fair jumping who had weapons in their possession. You know, often it's the people who commit the little crimes that commit the big crimes as well. So Eric Adams outlined a new plan to combat crime yesterday. Here's part of the blueprint. Modify plainclothes police unit, modify New York's bail system, new units of neighborhood safety teams, additional checkpoints at buses in Port Authority, additional patrol on subways and streets, which people will be thankful for given what's happened in the in the subway. You've got 30 seconds left here, Joe. Is this a plan that you think will work. I mean, he seems to have the commitment. 
We can absolutely reduce violent crime in our urban communities if we embrace our broken windows theory, if we're getting the criminals off the street, but we are only one component. Law enforcement is only one component of our criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that these violent criminals are getting high bond amounts so they can't get out over and over again. If they're out on eight felony bonds, they don't get a ninth one. And we need to make sure that the district attorneys, the rogue DAs in our urban communities, do your job. Prosecute these violent criminals to the fullest extent of the law. All right. Some of them appear to be getting religion. Uh, others probably not listening at this point. Joe Gamaldi, Fraternal Order of Police. Always good to check in with you. Thank